Hi, I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Nuggets of Truth. There are four really important questions that are probably the most overlooked questions that we as Christians take for granted. They are, one, what is salvation? Two, why do I need salvation? And three, how do I get salvation? And finally, number four, how do I know I have salvation? For us Christians, the answers are obvious, but for those who may not have had the luxury of growing up in church, or maybe they have never heard the term before, or maybe it was never fully explained to them, either way, the answer may not be so clear. So today, I want to clear up all misconceptions of these four very important questions in our four-part series entitled Salvation. Now, please understand that these four questions cannot be fully answered separately. So I will probably more than likely touch on truths that will be reiterated throughout the whole of the series. And when that is unavoidable, it's unavoidable, but I will endeavor not to repeat myself unnecessarily. With that said, please turn with me to two portions of scriptures that we can build our foundation. First, Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust. I will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. And now, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Isaiah says that God is our salvation, and Peter says that Jesus is the only name which salvation is found in. Therefore, Jesus must be God. For more on that, check out our video, Kinsman Redeemer and our Trinity series, which are both under the Nuggets of Truth category. All right, back to salvation. If you look up the word salvation in Webster's New World Dictionary and Thesaurus, this is what you will find. One, a saving or being saved from danger, evil, difficulty, destruction, etc. to rescue. Number two, a person or thing that is a means, cause, or source of preservation or rescue. Number three, deliverance from sin, from the penalties of sin, redemption. So to break all of that down and put it into two words, it would be rescue or redemption. We know what rescue means, but what is redemption? So if we visit Webster's New World Dictionary again and search the word redemption, we will find it means to redeem. So we have to search farther. And when we search farther, we'll find that redeem means one, to buy back, two, to get back or to recover as by paying a fee. And number three, to pay off as in a mortgage or a banknote. So to put it bluntly, salvation means to be redeemed, be purchased back. What happened was the first man and the first woman that God created and from whom the entire human race descended from was placed in a garden called the Garden of Eden. The man was instructed not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but he could freely eat from any of the other fruit trees that he so desired, including the tree of life. Along came the serpent and tempted Eve, the first woman, Adam's wife, and the mother of all the living to eat this forbidden fruit. Eve yielded to the temptation and she ate, but she also gave some to her husband, Adam, who was with her, and he ate. Let us turn to Genesis chapter 1 and read verse 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God 
actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she, she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Adam lost the image of God at that moment and sin entered in and was perpetually passed down through the fathers to their children. This is what Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. This sin separated all humanity from God. The only thing that could save or redeem mankind was a sinless sacrifice. Because Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So sin was reigning in our mortal bodies and man was hopelessly lost without a redeemer, Jesus. Just as Romans chapter 5 verse 21 says, So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, Jesus, the sinless sacrifice, had to come and die to redeem or to purchase us back to God. Just like Peter said in his first letter, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. So to put it plainly and bluntly, salvation simply means purchasing back. So let me sum up this video in one sentence. Salvation is the purchasing back of man's soul for God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I hope this video all made sense and that those of you who already had a good handle on our churchy term salvation has gained a new perspective on the word. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe and share this video. Thank you so much for joining us today for part one, what is salvation? Please join me next time for part two, why do I need salvation? I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold to Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.